Welcome back to Cinemation Movie Recaps. Today, I show you the movie Jumper from 2008. Beware of spoilers. Shy teenager David Rice has a crush on Millie, who dreams of traveling the world. He surprises Millie with a small gift, a snow globe with the Eiffel Tower on it. Mark, the mobster, grabs the globe and throws it on the icy river surface. David is determined to get the snow globe with the Eiffel Tower. He grabs it and waves to Millie before falling through the ice. David is swept away by the rushing current. It is certain that he will drown in the icy water. Suddenly, he finds himself in the library, among the bookshelves, in a violent torrent of water, gasping for breath, and lying on the floor. Soaked, he trudges home to find his father. David locks himself in his room. As his father gets angry, there is a strong wind. David is gone. He discovers that he has teleported into the dank hallway of a darkened library. He realizes that he has the opportunity to change his circumstances and escape the same way his mother abandoned him when he was just five years old. He teleports back home, where he picks up some money and belongings. Before leaving town, he stops at Millie's home. Millie cries bitterly in her mother's comforting arms. She is certain that David is dead. Millie hears a thud outside and goes out, finding the snow globe on the swing. She knows David is alive, but he does not answer her calls. He gets on a bus to get to the city and rents a room in a hostel. In a park, he learns how to control his powers and teleport. He then seeks out a bank and teleports directly into the vault to rob it in the middle of the night. When he realizes that his bag isn't big enough to steal all the money, he laughs and teleports back to his hotel to get another bag, and so on, until his whole room is filled with money and he sleeps on it. The mysterious Roland, who claims to be part of the NSA, shows up at the bank and is apparently not surprised by the robbery with the locked door. He obviously knows about the ability to teleport and is part of a powerful group that wants to find the bank robber. David has lived in an expensive apartment in the city for many years. It is filled with photos from his travels around the world and a small safe full of money. He loves the simple pleasures of life, no matter where, surfing in Fiji or dining at the top of the Sphinx in Egypt. He uses his powers to teleport around the house instead of walking more than two steps. Roland disturbs his peace with his electric gun and the wires that prevent David from teleporting. We learn that Roland has a mission in life, to destroy jumpers people who can teleport, because only God should have the power to be everywhere. David, desperate to escape, manages to teleport to his nursery. His father becomes aware of his presence, enters the room, and asks him to stay. David teleports away as his father opens the door. David is dissatisfied with his idyllic life and decides to visit Millie. He finds her in the same place, still working in a bar. Mark, his old enemy, challenges David to a fight. David crashes into a bank vault with him and leaves him there. He returns to the bar. Millie agrees to accompany him to Rome. Although shocked, she cannot deny him this lifelong dream. To his delight, she shows him the ancient city of Rome, but they are disappointed to find that the Colosseum is closed. Refusing to take no for an answer, he turns around and holds a gate for her. As they continue their private tour, he continues to open doors from the inside until they reach the floor of the stadium. He is shocked to find another jumper named Griffin, who shares that they are not the only jumpers and that there are people like Paladins and Roland who want to kill them. Two Paladins show up at once. Griffin is ready to fight them, eventually overpowering them and teleporting away. David follows Griffin to his hideout because he has some questions. Griffin's brief explanations such as that he will drop some paladins off with the sharks. Griffin says that David can't afford to have a girlfriend or family, and explains that the paladins will kill anyone David loves to get to him. David is back with Millie and agrees that it's time to go. They escape the officials in the Colosseum and find their way out. David doesn't teleport. He tells Millie that he will return to the hotel, but she refuses. David continues to be questioned by the police until other authorities arrive. Suddenly, a woman appears and tells David to get out of the limelight, giving him a deadline by which he must do so. He recognizes her from childhood photos, 
she's his mother. He finds Millie, takes her to the airport, and explains that he regrets not being able to go home with her after David leaves Mark in a bank fault. Roland is called in to talk to Mark. After repeatedly telling his story to the incredulous officials, Mark explains who David really is, where they came from, and everything he knows. Roland takes this information as an opportunity to visit David's father. David returns to Griffin to ask him more questions. This time, he realizes the danger to his family. He teleports back to his childhood home and finds his father lying on the floor. He teleports his father, crying to an emergency room to get help. He teleports to Mark in the prison and asks him what he said to Roland. Mark claims he told him everything. David realizes that Millie is in danger when she gets off the plane. However, Griffin refuses to help him. David follows Griffin over teleportation to convince him. David jumps into Griffin's car and they drive together. Griffin then teleports the car through traffic as he pleases. Griffin's parents were killed when he was five years old, while David's parents divorced when he was the same age. David inquires about teleporting his car. Griffin laughs and tells David about a jumper who tried to teleport a building. He died. Griffin eventually agrees to help David in exchange for a limited engagement. The many drawings of Roland that Griffin made in his home show that Griffin has a grudge against the paladin. They arrive in the U.S. an hour after Millie's plane lands. He teleports to her apartment to rescue her. However, Roland and his assault team arrive shortly after. He manages to teleport to Griffin's hideout. Griffin scolds him for this as Roland is able to follow his jump. Griffin is ready to leave his house, but Roland suddenly appears and the fight begins. Griffin teleports a bus towards Roland, but he manages to get under the bus. David gets trapped by Roland's wires and can't escape. Millie frees David and her anger at the strange power is obvious. He must take Millie home and leave her alone. She is quickly captured and taken hostage. Griffin plans to plant a bomb in Millie's apartment to kill Roland. However, that also means killing everyone there, including Millie. David doesn't want that, so they teleport to the globe and fight over the bomb and later the detonator. Griffin falls off the Empire State Building and emerges in a war zone, where David eventually traps Griffin with some fallen power lines that are as effective as Roland's devices. David returns to Millie's apartment knowing he is entering the lion's den. Roland and his team use electrical wires to tie him up and anchor him to the walls. David remembers Griffin's story and does not try to move the entire building. He only moves the parts that are attached to the anchoring wires. As he uses his power, the building begins to crumble, and the apartment is ripped from the ground. David teleports Roland into a cave and leaves him there. He says he can be thankful he didn't drop him off with the sharks. Roland follows David to the cave entrance, where he finds himself on a lonely cliff at the edge of the Grand Canyon. It is winter and David walks up to an expensive house. A young girl opens the door. David's mother follows her before sending her daughter to her bedroom. David figures that this secretive family explains why she abandoned him as a child. She explains that she is a paladin and couldn't kill him when he made his first jump at age five. He feels that she should have done more for him, but she maintains that she did him a favor by leaving him when he was a child. He realizes that he will not get more from her. Millie approaches him as he is leaving the house. He asks her where she wants to go, and she replies, surprise me. They both teleport away.